48 kills, Tarek GG, it's uh, What the Moose here, and today I've got a really nice guide for you, some advanced tips and tricks of bot lane, and I can't stress enough how important it is to master this first technique. So let's freeze up right away, and the majority of people at this stage will be focused purely on last hitting and won't be aware of their ally minions HP, but I'm encouraging you to take note of both sets of minions HP. We see there in the top right, we've got friendly minion on low HP, we know Corky's going to go for the last hit so he can get some free uncontested harass on Corky and take no damage in return. If you master this technique, you force the enemy AD to make a decision whether they get the last hit or they take the harass, but it's a really advanced technique and is really hard to master. Getting the balance right takes a lot of practice. So as we can see here, I've got two minions on the enemy team, low HP, I don't want to miss those, but we've also got an ally minion on low HP. So I make sure I pick up the two enemy minions before I get the free harass on Corky as we knew he was going to go for that last hit. Obviously this technique can be applied to every lane you play in. My next piece of advice is regarding the improved ignite mastery and the fact you can use it to tell when your enemy has ignite off cooldown if you didn't see when they used it last. This is particularly important if you're playing a champion with sustain or heals or even if you're using summoner heal because you want to bait the summoner heal for as long as possible unless they have ignite in which case you want to pop it as early as possible so I saw there mid Cassiopeia had plus 5 AD meaning her ignite was off cooldown and we can see here Lee Sin has plus 5 AP meaning his ignite is also off cooldown so even though Cassiopeia is coming to gank I've got my will of the ancients I've got heal up and max stacks of E there's very little risk of me dying I didn't go in at first, I popped my heal just in case Cassiopeia did have ulti at this stage but I'm e able to pick up an easy double kill because I knew both of them didn't have ignite off cooldown from the fact they took the improved ignite mastery. Moreover, knowing when it's safe to bait heal to the very last second can be the difference between picking up a kill and not. Here we see Severe with Jana's shield, thinks she can kill me, but baiting the heal just as the ricochet comes in, where it was kill Jana and Skana comes in from behind the tower to give us another nice kill. Another tip is don't feel obliged to react to a jungler gank, particularly if you're behind, you're low HP or there's lots of minions, because it puts you at risk of falling even further behind in your lane. So here we see Mundo coming in, I'm going to heal before I get ignited by Warwick, He's getting baited in by the Mundo, so I'm able to pick up a kill. I pop Ghost and Duke into the bush. Mundo misses his cleaver, putting him on low enough HP for me to E and Q and pick up a double kill and pretty much secure top lane for me for the rest of the game, where there was no need for both of them to die in that situation. Small camp control is particularly important in maintaining advantage in lane or allowing you to catch up if you've fallen behind. It's useful when the lane is pushed and you don't want to overextend, risk getting ganked or risk dying to an aggressive bot lane. Uh, double golems for this side of the map and wolves for the other side of the map. Both camps respawn every one minute and it allows you to gain a bit extra gold on the other lane if they're not doing it. I always see people nowadays starting off with golems because it does give you a level and gold advantage but I don't see people doing it throughout the game which I don't understand. It's so important to keep up the advantage or if you're falling behind like I said it's so important to try and get back into the game. You can't be in lane if you're that far behind and you're against an aggressive bot lane, it's just not going to happen. You're going to have to settle for picking up the small camps and waiting till the minions come to your tower so you can last hit at your tower with safety. The other thing you can do when the lane is pushed is dive the enemy and punish them for staying at their tower. The reason I don't condemn Severe is because she spell shields, I then get ulted by Jana, and I don't condemn Jana because Skana ulties her just in time. So you pick up a double kill and we're able to put this bot lane even further behind when they should have clearly just backed off. I do actually have to pop my heal though in order to live. My next piece of advice is pretty obvious, you always want to try and disrupt the enemy at double golems. So here Ash sees us and hits me with volley, but it was pretty risky because I took my E first instead of my W and face checked the bush. A lot of people would back off in a situation like this as the support could ward the bush, the enemy jungler could be close or the enemy team could be moving in. 
A way you can counter this is if your jungler doesn't start at blue, you can take your wolves as they take their double golems. But in this situation, we're going to wait until the timer for when they engage on double golems and try and disrupt them. Because the level advantage you can gain early from this can be the difference between winning and losing a lane. Especially if you're playing an aggressive bot lane like Exhaust, Ignite, Tarek and Graves, you can snowball so quickly and the game will be over before 20 minutes. So here we're making our way in, they'll be engaging on them, probably luring it round towards red. I think Jana is on pretty low HP so they do end up having to back off from this situation and watch as we retreat. Nunu waits in the bush just in case they re-engage on double golems to disrupt them once again but it would be stupid as minions are meeting bot and they would lose the advantage they are trying to gain in the first place. My final piece of advice is regarding last hitting on towers. You really don't want to be losing any minions to the tower. So melee minions take 2 tower hits and an auto attack and caster minions generally take 1 auto attack before and after but this is subject to change depending on level, items, abilities and buffs. You just have to know how much damage you can deal and how much damage they're going to take. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I really hope you guys learned something from it. Keep practicing the balance between harass and last hitting. Drop me a comment, let me know how you get on. Like the video if you want, it helps me out quite a lot. And subscribe for some more League of Legends guides and content. I've got a really nice guide coming on Machina Realm later this week and another really nice guide coming on skgaming.com later this week as well. So that's something to look forward to. I'll keep you guys informed about that. Just wanted to mention about this video, with the exception of this clip, all of the other clips recorded from 2k ELO rank games, but bot lane isn't my main role, so that's why some of the clips were pretty poor. Uh, my next video is going to be an advanced guide on brush control and advanced warding, so stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.